Hello friends, this video on Wave Optics Part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till Part 7 before going ahead with Part 8. So now we will try to understand the phenomenon of light like the reflection of light as well as the refraction of light using Huygens principle so that we get an even better understanding of Huygens principle because what happened earlier was when Newton gave the particle theory of light he explained these phenomena because of which his theory was accepted. Newton explained the phenomenon of reflection and refraction using the corpuscular theory. So that is how so, so therefore, if you want to prove the truth of the Huygens principle, you will have to prove the same phenomenon of reflection and refraction using Huygens principle. So let us see how good the Huygens principle could explain the reflection of plane waves. So in this case, uh, a, a good observation is necessary. So let us now study reflection of plane waves using Huygens principle. So here also the same concept, the concept will remain the same. Just that I will show you how the phenomenon takes place. Let us suppose in this case, how will be my, let us suppose this is the boundary. These are my incident waves. So incident waves would be somewhat like this. So how will the wavefront of this incident wave look like? If the waves are coming like this, the points of same phase when jotted together, the incident ray would be somewhat like this. So this will become the wave front for the incident beam. So this is my incident wave front. Right? So now when the incident rays fall like this after reflection, they will go back somewhat like this. So how will the reflect, reflected wavefront look like? The reflected wavefront will look somewhat like this. Right? So this is my incident wavefront and this is my reflected wavefront because when we are studying reflection using Huygens principle, we will understand it in terms of wavefronts because Huygens principle talks only in terms of wavefronts. It doesn't talk about light rays or light waves. Right? So this is my incident wavefront and we will see the behavior of this incident wavefront when it interacts with this boundary. Now what happens? This is my incident wavefront. How will it interact with the boundary? See, think of the situation. Visual, try to visualize the situation. Suppose a bunch of rays are coming in this way. Right? All of them will not strike the surface together. Right? The rays which are lying here, they will touch the surface before the rays which are here. Right? So that means the rays which are here, it will touch the surface after some time t from the time when these rays touch the surface. That means this wave front will interact with the surface gradually. Let us suppose that the time taken by this portion of the wave front to interact is tau. So tau is the time taken for this wave front to interact. Now, what happens when the interaction actually takes place? Now, as soon as the incident wave or the, this incident wave front interacts with the boundary, what happens? The wave front gives rise to secondary wavelets as mentioned before. So that means from every point of this wave front, secondary wavelengths will arise when it interacts with the boundary, right? So this wave front, because now you might ask, why will the secondary wavelets arise only when it interacts with the boundary? Because only when some disturbance is there, only then the wavelets will arise, right? For example, if we do not throw the stone into the water at all, will the secondary wavelets form? It will not form because there is no source of disturbance, right? So there has to be some source of disturbance. So here that source is the interaction with the boundary. So whenever the incident wave, wave front will touch the boundary, then every point of the incident wave front will give rise to secondary wavelets. Now what will be the secondary wavelets? For example, if this point of the incident wave front touch the boundary, then secondary wavelets will arise in this fashion, right? So what will be the wave front for this? It would be a sphere like this. Similarly, let us suppose that after time, T1, 
for the same situation let us suppose this incident wave is now here at this point earlier it was at this point now it is at this point so what will happen again it will give rise to waves like this so this will be the wave front now earlier also there was one more wave front so gradually and what will happen what will be the radius of the wave front in this case what will be the radius of the wave front here the radius of the wave front will be nothing but the velocity that is the speed of the wave which is v into the time taken what is what will be the time taken time taken is nothing but this time tau so this will be v into tau now gradually as it moves this side that means as each of these points interact what will happen time tau will keep decreasing because tau is the time taken to reach from here till here now when we are already reaching here when the point here is in, interacting with the boundary it is less than tau that means gradually the radius of the sphere will keep decreasing right so the locus or the common tangent to all these spheres gives rise to the reflected wave front because reflected wave front is nothing but the incident wave front position of the incident wave front after time tau right incident wave front we know we want to find out the position of the wave front after some time tau so that wave front will be nothing but the reflected wave front correct understand please understand it properly so ray of light falling on the surface is nothing but the incident wave front so we know the incident wave front we want to find out the reflected wave front so what is reflected wave front it is nothing but the position of the incident wave front after some time tau so what do we say we say that every time each point on this incident wave front interacts with the boundary it gives rise to secondary wavelets now we will draw the wave front for the secondary wavelets and a common tangent which joins all these secondary wave fronts is nothing but the position of the reflected wave front right so let us look at this animation which will help you to understand it even better so here this green ray which you see this green ray represent nothing but the incident wave front this represents the incident wave front please understand incident wave front and incident light waves are two different things if in, this is the incident wave front that means that the light waves are falling on the surface like this right that is why this is the wave front that's what i explained you here right so what happens here now as you see as soon as this incident wave front touches the surface everywhere it gives rise to a secondary waves and the line or the common line which joins the joins all the secondary wavelets is nothing but the reflected wave front right so this animation is it, it is just a rough animation just to help you understand how the reflection takes place or how do you uh, determine that what will be the reflected wave front using the huygens principle so i hope it is clear to you okay so now let us look at it diagrammatically so here we are only talking about reflection so let us suppose the my incident waves are falling on the surface like this so therefore my what will be my incident wave front this will be my incident wave front so that is why this is my incident wave front this is incident wave front right now every at every point it gives rise to secondary wavelets right and if you draw a common tangent to all the secondary wave fronts what do you get is nothing but the reflected wave front now how do you calculate what would be the radius of each of these uh, spheres that we do this way let us suppose that the speed of wave is v right so then if we call this point as p so here in this diagram we have also depicted the same thing here b a is nothing but the incident wave front and c e is the reflected wave front right so how much time will it take for b 
to reach C, that means how much time will it take for this particular portion of the incident wave front to cover this entire distance. Let us suppose that time is tau. So what would be BC? That means how much time it take for point B to reach point C? That will be nothing but velocity into time taken. That is V tau. That means at point A, when this point A interacts with the boundary, it will give rise to secondary waves. So what would be the radius of this wave front? It will be nothing but V into tau. Right? So that means this wave which A will form, this will have a radius which is given by V into tau. Now, after some time, this incident wave front will interact at this point. At that time, tau will keep decreasing. Therefore, at every point, as you go towards C, the radius of the sphere or the radius of the wave front will keep decreasing. And then we draw a common tangent, which is nothing but the reflected wave front. Right? So I hope it is clear to you that how do we explain the reflection of plane waves using Huygens principle. Similarly, we can explain the refraction of waves using Huygens principle. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.